It's January. I hate January. It's the corpse of the holiday season, resurrected as a hideous and bloodthirsty zombie. All the fluffy white Christmas snow transforms into a grimy gray crust that adheres to everything like a scum. The sense of goodwill gives place to a cynicism that could strip the paint right off Santa's sleigh. And if you happen to live in a valley, you get inversions. Weather-wise, an inversion is what happens when a warm front caps and seals off all the cooler air down below. More to the point, an inversion is when all the smog and gunk in the air has nowhere to go except in your face. If January were a color, it would be some kind of blend of diarrhea brown and puke orange. If it were an animal, it would be a tapeworm, growing inside a tapeworm. And if it were a video game, it would be Winter Games for the NES. Winter Games released for the Commodore 64 in 1985. Over the next few years, it was ported to a variety of consoles and computers, to generally favorable reviews. In 1987, it turned up on the NES. Winter Games for the NES features four events. That's right, four events. Last time I checked, the Olympic Winter Games had more than four events. Was this really the best they could do? There were 52 games on Action 52. By most accounts, they all sucked, but still. There's no good reason why the NES version couldn't have featured 8 or 9. But no, you get 4. It's natural to assume, then, that the developers must have been going for quality over quantity. If there were only 4 events on the cartridge, they must be pretty damn good, right? Right? The first event is Hot Dog Ski Aerials. You launch off a ramp, bust some moves, and hopefully stick your landing. Gameplay-wise, you press A to take off, then one of six directions on the D-pad to do a certain move. To get a decent score, you need to pull off two different moves before you land. And to land, you need to release the D-pad before you hit the ground. If you don't do it in time, you'll wipe out and get nothing. And really, that's all there is to it. It's pretty shallow. And the controls are stiff and the sound is nothing special, but the graphics and animations are okay, and the gameplay is somewhat challenging. It's even entertaining in small doses. If you can round up a friend or two to compete against, you can have some short-lived fun with it. It isn't good, but it isn't terrible. In fact, I consider this the best game on the cartridge. In the Land of the Blind, the One-Eyed Man is King, and in Winter Games for the NES, the event that rises to mediocrity gets the gold. Next up is speed skating. You race by alternately tapping left and right on the D-pad. That's it. Just tap left and right, back and forth, over and over. It reminds me a bit of Wii Shovelware games, where all you do is waggle the remote. But at least waving a Wii mote around will burn a few calories. The only payoff I can think of for spamming left and right on a D-pad is developing carpal tunnel syndrome. The instructions allege that you're supposed to tap back and forth rhythmically, the way a real speed skater shifts weight from one foot to the other. So I guess that, in its own sad and crippled way, this is a rhythm game. But damned if I can find the rhythm. The only cues you're given are the choppy animations, horrid sound effects, and the speed bar in the corner. Good luck divining a tempo from any of that. And oh, the sound. I know it's the Ness. I'm not expecting realistic sound effects, but they didn't even try here. It's just white noise. I played this dozens and dozens of times trying to coax some smidgen of fun from it, but it just ain't there. Speed skating is shallow, unresponsive, ugly, and tedious. And it will give you hand cramps. Enough said. Before I tear into this one, I want to acknowledge... It would be hard to make a video game about figure skating. Consider the poise and artistry and nuance that go into a real figure skating performance. How do you translate that to a D-pad and some buttons? Maybe nowadays they could work something out for the Kinect. But how would you do it on the NES? I don't know, except not how they did it here. You have a figure skater who glides along an endless rink while the chirpy rendition of Waltz of the Flowers blares in the background. You have one minute to string together a series of different moves. Falls and other errors cost you dearly. 
And to get a perfect 6.0, you have to complete every possible move without making any blunders. Some consider this to be the worst event on the cartridge, due in large part to the controls. And they are pretty bad. The whole event is pretty bad. What I can say in its defense is that it's not quite broken. You'd expect the jumps to be the hardest part, but once you know what the game is looking for, they're actually quite simple. Make sure you're skating the right direction for the jump you want to do, hold the corresponding direction on the D-pad, then hit A to take to the air. As soon as you're airborne, hit A a second time and hold it till you've completed your landing. It works every time. More difficult are the spins. You have to be skating backwards, then hit A, along with up for a camel spin, or down for a sitting spin. As soon as you go into it, you have to release everything. You'll keep on spinning. Then you tap A to come out of it. Getting this to work always feels a bit tricky, but what's really tough is you're supposed to spin exactly six times. Any fewer and you'll receive a small deduction. Any more and you'll fall down for a big deduction. And because the programmers were sadistic pricks, you're supposed to transition directly from a camel spin into a sitting spin. The more I played this, the better I got, but I was never able to get a perfect score. Maybe if I kept practicing it for several weeks, I could master it. Or maybe not. I'll never know, because I'm done with it. Whether you're falling down every few seconds, or pulling off spins and triple lutzes, this event is never really fun. It is challenging, and in my opinion it's better than the speed skating, but that's hardly a recommendation. Unless you're a rabid fan of figure skating, and maybe even then, I'd give this one a pass. Finally, there's bobsledding. The instructions say it might be the most thrilling of all the Winter Game events. I don't know about that, but it's easily the ugliest. Look at that screen! The actual game graphics, such as they are, are relegated to this window up in the corner. The only other helpful display in all this mess is the map showing the layout of the course. But why couldn't they just make that an overlay? This also has terrible sound. As with speed skating, it's just white noise that barely correlates with what's happening on screen. The only relief you'll get from it is the insipid ditty that plays after each race. Somehow, I hate that even worse than the white noise. Gameplay-wise, you hit left or right on the D-pad to steer your bobsled left or right. And if you want to get really fancy, you can also hit down to slow down. You have to anticipate each turn by a little bit to keep your sled from dragging or even crashing. You get three chances to complete the course, and you keep your best time from those three runs. And that's really all there is to it. So, is it any fun? Well, a few times playing it, I did find myself getting into it. There's a certain satisfaction in negotiating a tight turn without losing speed. But every time I started having fun with it, the shallow gameplay, grating sound, and hideous visuals snapped me right back out of the experience. Did I mention that it's ugly? And the longer you play it, the uglier it gets. Even if the graphics and sound were top-notch, there's just not enough of a game here to warrant more than a few playthroughs. So that's what I'd recommend. Play it through a few times and then forget you ever saw it. And that's Winter Games. The game does keep track of your high scores, but only until you turn off the console. There are multiple gameplay modes, but the differences between them are negligible. If for some reason you just can't get enough of the opening cutscene, the game does give you the option to watch it as many times as you want. I like to imagine a bunch of stoners baked off their asses watching this over and over and finding some incredible cosmic significance in it. Somebody ought to get some enjoyment out of it, because as far as retail games go, this is the bottom of the barrel. With the other games I've reviewed, I had some trouble deciding how to score them. I like to try to see the good in games, even crappy ones. But with this one, my only dilemma was whether to give it four birds or five. I have played worse games, but most of those were in a browser window, and all of them were free. Winter Games was a retail release. Brand new, it would have sold for 40 or 50 bucks, and that's what finally decided me on how to score it. 
Among the millions of people who owned an NES back in the day, there were middle and lower income families who could only afford to buy one game a year. For some of those kids, Winter Games was that one game. Winter Games for the NES. Five birds out of five. There are people who intentionally play bad games for the ironic entertainment. I know because I'm one of them. But even if you fall into this category, I'd still advise you to steer clear of this one. It's too cheap and poor to even be funny. It's just kind of depressing. In fact, the only way I can recommend this is if you're an extreme, hardcore, fit-to-be-tied masochist. If you have an insatiable appetite for suffering and being humiliated, then this might do it for you. Just be sure when you order it to have it sent in a plain wrapper. And if your neighbors see you picking up the package and ask about it, tell them it's pornography or jihadi propaganda or almost anything but winter games. Some things are best kept private. Whoa, that's heavy, man.